A Fox News alert. Four people are dead and 21 hurt, including three Texas law enforcement officers, after a traffic stop results in a shooting rampage. Here to react is our law enforcement panel, a great group of guys, former NYPD Lieutenant Dr. Darren Porcher, former Westchester County Police Sergeant Steve Cardian, Blue Lives Matter NYC uh, founder and NYPD Sergeant Joseph Imperatrice, and Lieutenant Stephen Rogers, retired commander of the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department. Gentlemen, thank you all for being here. Thank Let's you for your time. service and your insight on a day like this. So, Steve, let me start with you. Uh, a routine traffic stop goes sideways. Uh, this is, is this a unique situation or something that is confronted often? It's confronted often in the police academy. Young officers are told no traffic stop is routine. Uh, uh, you know, my guess is that uh, there's a possibility that these troopers uh, stopped this individual. They don't know if he committed a crime. That's why he opened fire on them. Or was he on his way to uh, co create a more massive shooting? So you never know where you're going to go into, but uh, God bless these cops. They do it every day. They put their lives on the line. Joe, you see, I, I've been in awe of that footage all morning of that one particular police officer who's on the scene, gets out of his patrol car, and goes straight toward that vehicle with his handgun. That's what we do, and we need to praise these officers for going above and beyond and stopping what could have been a lot worse. You're going to hear in the coming days politicians say, well, we need stricter gun laws, and that's not the problem because bad people are going to do bad things. People that have guns already, it's going to circumvent it. And I really believe nationwide our officers need to be more hands-on, be more proactive, and people need to have the fear of God in them that they're going to get stopped. They're going to get the illegal guns off of them. They're going to be put into jail, and hopefully we start saving more lives. Hopefully, Steve, you've, you've got a background in investigations. Any take on it, how, how, you, how you look at the situation or what we'll learn in the future here? Well, I, I agree with Steve that he was either interrupted en route to a, a mass shooting to do something evil, or he set the police officers up. They, they pulled him over for a, a minor violation, a fair to, to signal lane changes, and, you know, he, he took him out. So, and then he goes on a, a, a rampant uh, rage shooting where he shot and killed a number of people. Absolutely. Dr. Porcher, uh, y your take on this, just overall. You know, it's unfortunate, and when we look at solutions moving forward, I, Pete, this is something that you can attest to. Over in Iraq and Afghanistan, the military used surveillance systems that, flow above, that flew above. We had manned and unmanned aircrafts. The Currently, right now, the DEA is using a system down on the border towns in Mexico that focuses on a lot of the drug traffickers, and I think that this would be essential um, technology is forced to use and with these mass shootings because what it does it presents two factions one a sense of omnipresence and then two it immediately gets that information out to the officers that are responding because police pursuits are a deadly encounter and so I was just down in Dayton Ohio just recently and I sat on a panel in connection with these mass shootings and one of the things that I saw was I sat down with uh, there were several different um, companies I should say companies but military vendors things to that effect and was one persistent surveillance systems and they sat down and they had this technology mm -hmm. and what it is is Air Force officers, Air Force pilots that actually fly these drones and things to that effect and I think that something like this would be essential for these mass shootings. Help because track them. Yes, Help I'm track sorry. Folks. Help right, right, because folks. what's happening is they just, they just continuously happening over and over yeah. again, and we need something outside of just gun control or just greater fortifications with our police departments. All you gentlemen uh, have, have put the uniform on. We're in a different kind of environment for what our police face. Now, we don't have enough time. We never have enough time for these segments. But briefly, if all of you would speak to what it takes to do the job of a law enforcement officer today in light of what they're up to, all, all, all quickly. Situational awareness is very critical, more so today than it was years ago. You have to know your surroundings. Intelligence information is very critical. You have to be very aware of what's happening around the country because it could happen to you. Be strong, be courageous, and be prayerful. Joe. People are afraid with everything going on in the climate that officers are going to stop doing their job and that's never going to happen. You're going to see that. You saw that last night with this active shooter. And uh, we shoot up for a reason for the officers that were lost and also to uh, protect the public. That'll always happen. Steve. The app application of common sense, due dil diligence, uh, staying up on the laws, and being an active police officer. Uh, active police officers are, are way better uh, prepared than anything. Proactive. Darren, 10 seconds, briefly. Cops, we run into things that people run away from, and this is constantly uh, taking place, and we need to respect law enforcement, and this anti-cop sen sentiment is driving us back, and we need to move forward. God bless you guys. Thank you for what you do, Thank and you. bringing truth to the couch this morning. More Fox & Friends on the other side.